Why you out there? Lord of mercy, what a blessing. I'm Dan. I want to welcome everyone to my home in the sticks. Wherever you at in the world, I hope you're having a great week. I hope everything's good with you, especially on this Memorial Day. So if you celebrate Memorial Day, happy Memorial Day, and thank you to all the folks, men and women that have served to keep our country safe. Before we get started on today's video, I always like to mention that if you are new to this channel, I want to welcome you. And if you return and just see what old Dan's got going on over her, I show enough thank you for coming back. What I want to share with you and y'all today is we're going to revisit a video that I did here, I don't know, a month or so ago, and it has to do with planting tomatoes in containers. So let's go. All right, I'm here to tell you it is ridiculously hot here in East Central Mississippi. We're touching about 100 degrees right now. I'm in the shade, but it is just crazy hot over here. I'm gonna spin you around. I'm gonna show you how I'm growing a big old huge tomato in this small self-watering container. Check it out. So look at there. This is an early girl tomato. And right now, I'm gonna say this tomato is right over about 6162 in height. So over six foot. What I wanted to talk about is how to successfully grow an indeterminate tomato such as this one in a rather small container. And in my case, this is a self-watering container or a wicking container with a trellis system on it. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you is prune, prune, prune. We don't want any leaf litter touching this area right here. And when I say leaf litter, I mean leaves tomato leaves, we don't want any of those laying in our growing medium at all. Uh, one point to bring up is make sure you prune it. And I prune this, this tomato pretty heavily. And as you can see, I have tons of maters everywhere. They're just all over the place. The second thing that I want to bring up is mulching. Make sure you are mulching your tomato plant in. I do it because over here in East Central Mississippi, it gets just so daggum hot. And these plants are sucking up a lot of water right now. And this mulch is keeping some of that moisture in the soil. So I am adding probably about a gallon, gallon and a half of water into this container dang near every day because this plant is sucking up a lot of water. The third thing I want to bring up is Fertilizing. Make sure you are fertilizing your made up plant. Now I have started off just using a regular 444 on this tomato plant, but once I started seeing the blooms, I laid off on the nitrogen and went big on the phosphorus and potassium. So I've been using a 51010 and this thing is just taken off. I normally don't let these tomato plants get this big but I just wanted to see how tall this thing would get. And I'm right at six foot, and this is way over my head. So, yeah. One more thing I wanna bring up is make sure you are checking and tending to blossom in rot. Tomatoes, uh, some peppers, are really susceptible to blossom in rot. Let me show you. Here's one of my maters that I got early on when I flipped this guy over and looked at the bottom of it, I'm having some blossom in rot issues. So I automatically knew what it was. It's just a calcium deficiency in the soil. And yeah, look at them now. There's no blossom in rot on any of these maters anywhere. Now if you want to stop blossom in rot smack dab in its tracks, I'm going to show you something that I use and as you can see it is working for me and what I use is dolomite lime and this is a high yield product agricultural limestone that's all it is and it is a finer grain of lime this is 21 percent calcium I'm gonna tell you this stuff works and it's almost like a sand like a powder it's just real fine all I did was just scoot all of this mulch back and I laid some dolomite lime around this plant. And I'm here to tell you, no more blossom in rot. So if you're having problems with blossom in rot, give dolomite lime a try, uh, the powdery type, and it's worked really, really good for me. So 
Yeah, a couple four tips on how to grow a big old tomato in a container. All right, that's what I wanted to share with you and y'all today, a short video and actually revisiting a video on a indeterminate tomato that I planted in a container. It is growing phenomenally, I have to say. It's been a minute since I've grown a tomato plant that big, but it is putting off a bunch of maters. So if you, uh, you're having problems with your maters or you want to grow some big maters, there's four, a couple four tips uh, that I give you to uh, successfully grow big maters in a small container. So again, I hope everybody's having a show enough great week, and I hope you're staying safe amid the crisis that's still going on. If you uh, like this video, go and give it a thumbs up, they help. If you haven't subscribed to the Home Sticks channel, Lord mercy. Y'all need to come over and give old Dan a look, because I'm always doing stuff, like growing big old tomato plants in containers. With that being said, you know it's coming, Dan referee show enough, always gonna say it. Don't let nobody do your shine. And I mean nobody. You sure enough get your shine on, get your grow on. It's dang important. And Dan will see you and y'all in the next video.